Um, so yeah, it's the uh, Team Red Eye Shit Show. Uh, the, the Antiques Road Show of Shit. Um, I am your host, uh, Benjamin Nur. Uh, I don't even play that character in Sergeant Friend, so, you know, it is what it is. Um, I have my, uh, my trusty sidekick, as always, Mr. Corbin Waffles himself. Say hi, Corbin. Stop accusing me of kicking people in the sides. I will when you stop doing it. And I also have, I also have Rem. Yo. He's been in one shit show so far, and this is his second. So be gentle. Wait, he has what's his, his name again? Rem. Oh, that's a stupid name. Yeah. He's like that female Shinigami. Anyway, uh, today we're talking about philosophy. Um, and it's interesting because I think the three of us have very different philosophies. So I think that'll be fun. My philosophy is I should be allowed to hurt anybody I want, and you have to deal with it. That is not your philosophy. Liar. <laughs> You're a lion dog face pony soldier. <laughs> Isn't that what Biden said? Yes, that is. See, he gets it. This boy didn't know that reference when no, I made I it. Didn't. I made that reference at work the other day, and he had no idea what the hell I was on about. I was explaining how it sounds like a playground insult. Yes, he was. Um... Everything Biden says is a playground. Look fat. Yeah, look fat. <laughs> um, hey, Esther, you. Um, Why does he say, he says his things that are completely out of context from what he's talking so, about? So, saying hey, Esther, I think was referring, because he specifically mentioned Esther Williams later in his, like, half apology to Corn Pop. So, like, Esther Williams is, like, a famous swimmer, but she's a woman. So I think the insinuation was he was calling him a chick. Because he, like, had, like, all nice hair and shit. So I think that's what the insult was supposed uh, to be there. <laughs> this sounds like nonsense. But, like, you have to really think and stretch to get that logic. So he wasn't calling somebody by their preferred pronoun? No, Corn Pop was a bad dude. He ran a bunch of bad boys, haven't you heard? It was my understanding that everyone had heard. <laughs> I thought... Heard what? Bird is the word. Got him. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, so Corbin and I have both been reading a lot of Ayn Rand lately. Uh, she gets she gets a lot of hate for some reason. It's because people take her at that. It's because people take the selfishness thing out of context. Yeah, because she she doesn't define selfishness in the way that you think of selfishness. Yeah, she's not saying like you should do. Well, in a way, she's saying that you should be able to do what you want despite what other people think, but you should make your own morals based on what you think rationally makes sense. Well, yeah, and, like, isn't a whole big part of objectivism in not, like, supporting ideas that you are opposed to? Yeah. I guess so the... It's selfishness with responsibility. Yeah, like, the whole point of it is, like, you're, you're, you're building yourself up, and, like, by extension... Like, there's a certain element of ethical egoism, ethical egoism into it, where you're building yourself up, and naturally, helping others in the long run would likely be beneficial to you. Yeah, because benefiting your community will make them want to benefit you. Yeah. And that's what it comes down to. It's yeah. just for the self. Yeah, but Ayn Rand also completely rejects altruism. She doesn't like the idea of helping people just for the sake of helping people. There has to be a purpose behind it. Yeah, like you aren't morally obligated to go out of your way to help other people. You should do what... If it doesn't have any benefit to you, you don't have to do it. Yeah. And I think that's logical. I guess that's probably why people have a problem with her a lot of the time, because she's very logical. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not very much. Well, it's emotion. literally. I, I feel like her way of looking at things is the most logical because she views everything in objective, black and white, no gray areas. Uh, only thinking of things in objective fact, not in any sort of. She doesn't believe in moral grayness. Right, and I I do take a little bit of umbrage with that because I think that there is a scale. Like I don't think, for instance, walking up and shooting someone in the face is equal to stealing a pencil for instance. Yeah, but I don't think... Ayn Rand doesn't say... It, it's not like the Bible where all sins are equal. Are all sins equal in the Bible? I don't recall that being the case. What? Yeah. I that's think, like the number I think one, so. Yeah. That's are like they? The big thing. Is it? Yeah, all sins are equal in the Bible. That doesn't make any sense. 
I I agree. Huh. I mean, Grand, I was I was hardcore religious, but I was I was Mormon, so I guess I mean we use the Bible, but I read the Book of Mormon a lot more. Um, uh, I mean, that's just something I always heard about Christianity. Okay. Well, I, I think there's one thing that that's what they told me in church. Okay. Well, again, you, you were going to a different church than I was, so I think that's an interesting that's dynamic there. A lot of weird stuff. Yeah. Didn't didn't we think that maybe you were in a cult? Maybe I don't know. Like, didn't they say uh, some they, weird they shit? Got Lilith, though, and they also told me that like a lot of my family was going to hell, and I had to pray for them. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of par for the course with a lot of Christian religions, though, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, except they were, like, like, they were, like, really weird about it, though. Huh. You know, I, um... Now, luckily, the, the, the particular Mormon communities I've come from have all been a lot more chill. I've heard some nightmare stories about other people who've lived, like, in other parts here and have lived in other Mormon communities where it's a little worse. But my family's never been, like, super judgmental or anything like that. It's been kind of the opposite. There are lots of moral aspects of Christianity I like and dislike. Yeah, I, th I think that the Bible is our, our country's moral framework, and there's a lot of good things, whether taken literally or metaphorically, that ab that absolutely... I like Ryan because she's like the... Because a lot of stuff that's in objectivism, a lot of those morals do come from Christianity, too, I think. Uh-huh. Because... Her philosophy is based on, like, the ideals of classic America. Right. If those were largely based on Christianity. Yeah. She says that we should only believe in what can be proven and what rationally makes sense. So she's not for Christianity, obviously. Right. Is there a way... This The audio levels keep changing. Why? Wow, that so weird. Yeah, like, I'm trying to get to stop doing that. Like, my microphone's audio levels keep changing, and it's, like, really weird, so I have to keep fucking with it. Is it trying to be, like, convenient? Like, I think it's trying to, like, automatically adjust somehow, and I'm trying to see if I can disable that, but I can't figure out how. I feel like a lot of time, technology like that's being, trying to be convenient, but it becomes an inconvenience. Yeah. Like, autocorrect. <laughs> um, let's see... Um. Hmm. Configure speech recognition. See how that goes. Where's the option? Configure this speech. This book isn't long enough to teach the ideals of objectivism. Advanced speech settings. Let's see. Um. Speech recognition device. Default speech profile. Audio input, number of spaces to insert. Sorry to fuck with all this while we're doing this. Configure microphone. Here we go. Desktop microphone. Next. Next. Hello. Cancel. It's... What the fuck? Um... Yeah, I, I hate technology. Um, there's a lot of problems with that. That's another thing that goes into philosophy, because uh, I very much don't like the way technology has been going. It's made us very dependent on it. And there's a lot of problems with it. Like, I mean, granted, this is just me being bitchy about technology and using that as a segue to continue to bitch about technology. When it comes to, like, uh, well, I think that we shouldn't have technology to make up for every aspect of life. I definitely don't think we need, like, uh, I don't think we need to make everything super convenient. Uh -huh. But also, like, when it comes to the, to the internet, I'd be fine with the internet if it wasn't so censored now and if ever if it wasn't taken so seriously now yeah that's fair i also do think though the in a lot of internet is great yeah the internet like, of like the, like what the internet used to be was great yeah like in the mid 2000s to like the mid 2010s internet was yeah. great then but like nowadays it has uh censorship and stuff reduce volume of other sounds do nothing will that help that might do it. I, I so I did. I, I clicked do nothing on the microphone settings. So hopefully now it'll stay locked in at a reasonable volume instead of trying to adjust. So I guess like early internet was like the wild west. Yeah, the early internet was great. It did all sorts of crazy. It's still reducing. What the hell are you doing? Stop it. <laughs> um, but yeah, the early internet was crazy. Um, like the, you had things like Rotten.com and like 
shit like that that had like gore and stuff on it. Like also, it was insane. Uh, there used to be a lot more. Uh, there used to be a lot more uh, offensiveness, and there used to be a lot. Uh, definitely, there was a, a more. Uh, there was at least. Uh, people on the right were allowed to express their opinion on the on the internet back then, but now you really, like the only people that can really express their opinion are people that fit within a very specific worldview. That's bullshit. You should be able to say whatever you want on the internet. Exactly. Like the problem is, is like the internet is very like there's a lot of like big name brands that are run by very specific interests. Uh, also, so, like, everything that's funded by the left push it, puts out, like, propaganda, and, you know what I mean, like, the, uh, like, uh, people on the, people like Hillary Clinton and, uh, Joe Biden and all, they, they, uh, they pay for, they pay people to, uh, lie you know what i mean like they pay like uh websites they pay like yeah like how they recently paid all those tiktokers to push a bunch of propaganda yeah and that's and they've been doing that for years though that's not like anything new and yeah that's how they get they get the so many people on their side it's through culture which is why the right needs to start using the culture to motivate people oh absolutely i think we absolutely do need to branch out more into culture and have culture become more balanced you need things with different messages and different morals because if you're getting nothing but the same thing it's like an echo chamber yeah exactly it's an echo chamber um but uh i think i think one interesting thing that uh i don't know because i lost my train of thought um now here, now here we go so so with the internet right I do think in a lot of ways the internet has been a net negative to humanity because I think that we've become incredibly dependent on it. A lot of people don't... more collective. Yeah, but not only has it made us collective in the regard that we reach out to random people online to try and feel like a sense of belonging rather than trying to belong within our own communities, not only has it done that, but it's made us more sedentary to sit at home and do nothing. It's made us so that... Um... Although I do think with sitting home and do nothing a lot of time to think i think is beneficial to you also that's fair yeah i do think it is good to have time to think but i think that uh a lot of the problem is uh you don't want to like actually do things so you just go online and just waste your days on that instead of going outside and like you know like one thing i think is one rule i think absolutely should be in place i don't think kids should be allowed on the internet like at all when do you think yeah. you should be able to go on the internet? I'd say at least, like, in your 13. teens. Yeah, 13. 13 is pretty fair. Um, and then you that's think, the way it, and, it pretty much used to be, was that parents typically didn't let their kids on the internet until they were of teenage years, but then mothers just started letting their kids on the internet. They had, like, like, tablet two. phones and all that shit. Yeah. Um, and now everything... And I think it's... Uh, the, the whole COPPA thing is stupid, Uh because parents need to hold themselves accountable. Yeah. Well, and COPPA also just kind of feels like a, like a half measure. Like, it doesn't feel like a, a real solution to anything. I think kids should just be banned from the internet. I think that's the only logical conclusion to come to. Yeah, I agree. Because your kids should not be on something where they're getting fed a bunch of crazy ideas from other people constantly. Yeah. Because, I mean, it, it, it's ultimately up to a parent to raise their kids, whereas nowadays... Kids are raised by the internet and by school, which is also indoctrination factories at this point. But and, all, and, and that even comes into the the, the the bill. What was that bill called? Because I don't want to call it the the, the parental was. rights and education bill. Yeah. Yeah. Hang on but a sec. The, okay. Sorry about that. I paused the recording for a second. I've hit record more again. More of the survival kit here. Huh? Yep. Yeah. No. Uh, we have these seventy-two hour kits that have. Uh, bunch of stuff in them just in case like food and uh toothbrushes and uh other stuff i want to get like a flare gun that'd be hey, cool that flagging out in the back there you talking about my uh that one You're using it as a pointer now. yeah <laughs> my gadsden flag back there yeah yeah that's a gadsden flag 
Because to me, the most fundamental and important thing philosophically to me is liberty. Everything else is secondary. Give me liberty or give me death. Exactly. Uh, that was Patrick Henry who said that? I think that was Jefferson. I think Patrick Henry said, those who trade freedom for security deserve neither. I think that was Patrick Henry. I could be wrong. They could both be Patrick Henry. I could be wrong. I can I remember people were, he was like a silver tongue, you know, like. I like libertarianism a lot. Yeah. Yeah, libertarianism is absolutely what I stand for. Um, I think that uh, for me, like, m the most important thing is just keeping the government out of our lives to just leave us the fuck alone. You know something I want to say I like about objectivism is to me, objectivism sort of feels like a uh, do-it-yourself philosophy. Uh -huh. Like a uh, make-your-own-philosophy philosophy where you get to decide for yourself what rationally... You make to, you get to rationally make your own morals. I like that idea. I think and that's... I I like, and I like the idea of putting your opinions before the opinions of others. Well, something I think it's is... What you believe is true. Right. Something I think is very important with philosophy is you realize where your own ideals are. Because if you're just taking something just because it's a philosophy you've agreed with otherwise, and that makes you just kind of agree with something you wouldn't necessarily otherwise agree with, you know, I don't think you need to necessarily agree with every tenet of the philosophies you're following. I think what like, needs... I don't agree with Ayn Rand 100%. I think Ayn Rand was pro, a pro-abortion. I'm not going to say pro-life. Pro-abortion. You mean pro-choice, uh, because that's the that's the fake one. Pro-life I mean, yeah, is the real pro one. That's what I meant. Yeah, I got confused there. But, uh, but like, uh, she was pro-abortion, and I'm definitely not pro-abortion. Yeah, no, me either, obviously. Um, I'm very, very much anti-abortion. But that comes, I think that, like, comes from her anti-religious aspect, you know, because a lot of people that aren't relate, raised in religious households don't believe that life begins at conception. Right, but life beginning uh, at conception is the only one that is consistent because everything else, you ask yeah, anyone who's like quote unquote. There's no evidence to say when a fetus can start feeling pain. There's no evidence to say when a fetus is able to think. There's no evidence to well, say exactly when that starts. And so, I don't even think that matters. I think what matters is it's a new human with their own DNA. Like it's a, and conception is when they get their own set of DNA. They become a unique being. They're not just... Yeah, I, I, I try to be... I don't know. It's not, it, You can't even really be fair with it, because it's, it's one of the things... Because there really isn't a middle ground, is there? No, I feel like there's really not a middle ground on the abortion issue. Let's see if turning off the fan helps the uh, audio levels. Okay, gotcha. Because, like, uh... Cause I just think it's... It, I, I mostly think it's wrong, because... If you, there's no proof saying when it's okay to have an abortion, like there's no evidence that says when the fetus, eat, like even their standard of life, their idea of what life is, is that consciousness. There's no evidence to say when consciousness begins with the fetus. There's no way to understand that. Well, that's again, so, that's not even what I'm worried about. What I'm worried about is number one, once it's a new being, a new person, you should have no right over them. Like if people I also think just because it's uh, also a, a woman is given so many opportunities as well that it, it, a woman is given so many opportunities other than abortion that uh, that having an abortion is is uh, is immoral because it's a it's a it's. I mean, it's it's literally it's ending a, a possible life, and that's worse than that's worse than killing someone because that's robbing somebody of the chance of living in the first place. Uh huh. I I I'd say there uh, for me I'd put them probably on equal terms, but I can see where you're coming from with that. Um, I think that uh, the only and the only and I do mean only instance that I would be even remotely okay with it is if the baby is already dead or is for sure not going to make it. At that point, it's like okay, I get it. And if the woman's going to die. Yeah, at that point, I think that's a very tough choice to make. I still don't think it should be the first choice. I think the mother should evaluate what's more important. Even if a woman is uh, is raped, if she has that child, I think she'll be. I think she would be grateful that something know, good could come her. from something so terrible. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I would. I, I would say that would be my logic. Um, I think that when you're put in that situation unwillingly, I understand and empathize why that would be tougher. 
But I also don't think two wrongs make a right, and I don't think just killing a baby just because the mom was raped is right. Uh... I don't I mean, know. He doesn't want to say anything about the the topic specifically. Well, he he, he was about to. He's about to chime in. Oh, okay. Um, I guess for me, it's uh, I guess I understand uh, two wrongs don't make a right. But when it comes to rape, that's obviously something that they didn't choose. That, um, and I feel like having to bring that to term, I can be. I can be okay with them going through with that, I think, because it's like a very emotionally traumatic thing. Like, this is not my right. baby. I didn't want it. But you think that you think that abortion can't be emotionally traumatic? You don't think having something killed inside of you and then sucked out it can't be traumatic? I mean, that could also be traumatic, but I, I, I think... I get the perspective, definitely. Yeah. I, used to, I used to be like that. I'm much more absolute, absolutist on it now than I used to be. Because it just comes to the end of the day, like, if you have that kid, if you have that kid, you couldn't possibly imagine having the abortion in the first place. Once you have the kid, you know, it's done, and, and, you, and you have to, it, it, that's its own person with its own feelings, its own worldview, its own experiences and everything. Uh-huh. And it's, uh, and it's hard to, and if somebody can disregard that, then I think that's kind of a sad person. Yeah. Um, and I think also, like, acting like there isn't still a bond, because the thing is, in nature, they say that the strongest bond is between a mother and child, and to pretend that that's somehow, like, different just because the mother didn't want the child in the first place, I don't think it's true, because there's chemicals in your brain that are released when you get pregnant and released when you give birth that make it so that you're, like, the closest to that child than you can be to anyone else. Something I want to say, though, about, uh motherhood specifically is well, what I hear a lot is that women are supposed to be the more empathetic oh yeah well sex. I think that's a myth but what I but what's interesting about women though is that they uh, as far as I can tell they seem to really like feeling pain they really like the feeling of pain and not just physical pain but emotional pain and they're sort of addicted to constantly feeling that emotional pain. A lot of women are addicted to getting constant emotional pain. Uh, and I think from in, in, in with the with male abuse, I notice it's usually just you know hitting or sexual abuse or whatever. But with with women, there's a lot more psychological abuse and there's like genital mutilation and things like that. And when it comes to like the abortion, where they disattach themselves from whatever. And you could say that these don't seem empathetic, but because they have that addiction to pain, I think they get pleasure from hurting others because it causes them emotional pain, and they like that emotional pain. Yeah, I could see what you mean. I mean, you're not going to hear me argue that. I know you probably don't agree. Yeah, interesting, but I don't know how I agree now. <laughs> What'd he say? He said interesting, but he doesn't think he agrees, no. Mm -hmm. um, and I can't. That's kind of the response I expect. Because he hasn't swallowed the reddest of pills yet. Um, um, but, um, no, but uh, another thing. Uh, I think uh, even when you discount that, right? Like, let's say we make a provision that they're still allowed to get it in rape, which I'd still be against, but let's pretend that that's okay, right? For sake of argument. If we say okay. that, if we say that, people are still going to push for it otherwise. Because the criteria used to be safe, legal, and rare. Now it's like all women should have access to it at any stage, which is ridiculous. Like I said, and there's... And if you're a man, you shouldn't... I mean, like, right now, we shouldn't be expressing our opinions. We're not women. We don't know what it's like. Right, no, that's we bullshit. To try and say that, like, we can't understand something just because we haven't specifically lived it doesn't make any fucking sense to me. How would anyone write anything? Exactly. Or say anything? Yeah. I want to say something specifically about male privilege real quick. Okay. So, men are, kill are statistically killed more often. Men yeah. statistically commit suicide more often. Yeah. If you count prison statistics, men are raped more often. Yeah. If you, uh... 
men uh, women can get hired just for being women and not actually being qualified for a job. Men don't get the say on uh, abortion, and men don't get don't typically get custody of the child. But somehow women are uh, somehow men are more privileged. Yeah, no, it doesn't make any sense to me. Um, and the legal system is also stacked against us. Like um, custody battles, almost almost invariably t typically go to the mother. Like, there's exceptions, but it is very stacked against you when you're a father trying to get custody of your kid. Like, look at Ethan Stacy. That's this kid that was murdered oh, out... Oh, yeah, God. Yeah. Um, like, his dad told the court, hey, she's unstable, don't give him to her, and they still gave him to her, and her and her husband, the stepdad, brutally murdered this kid, made him eat his shit while he was still alive knocked out his fucking teeth and completely disfigured him to the point where he was unrecognizable, took him up to a lake and buried him out there. He was, he was four. Yeah, four years old. Jesus. Also, the, for me, too, it, it, women do the worst kind of abuse to children yeah. that I've seen. Like, when men abuse children, it's something, it's simple. It's like hitting a child, causing them physical pain. Like, yeah, that's horrible, but as an adult, that's not really going to be you know, as affecting as, you know, genital mutilation or as uh, being told every day of my life that I can just be whatever I want. I could be a woman if I want. That's psychologically damaging. Yeah. <laughs> it's like if uh, it's like if I told you you could you could be a fucking dog if you wanted. I mean there already are people who do dog play. That's fucking like, weird. I think Matt Walsh said it pretty good where he said uh, if you tell a kid that he can be a dinosaur, he will tell you that he is, in fact, that very dinosaur. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, Matt Walsh also did that, that book, Johnny the Walrus, which was, like, it was yeah. number one selling in LGBT books on Amazon until they changed the category for it. And I think it's funny when women, when, when trans women react to, not trans, they're trans men, but they call themselves trans women, you know what I mean. Men pretending but, to be women, yeah. Yeah, but where they, um, it, 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 but when they're criticizing the book, they're like, a kid doesn't even understand this. And it's like, yes, exactly. That's the point. A kid doesn't understand it. So stop telling a kid he can be what he wants to be. Yeah. It's a child. And I, I love how, like, in the chapter where, like, the doctor is going to cut off Johnny's feet to turn him into flippers, the yeah. people are like, that's that's horrible. Like, that, that's it's like, yeah, so it's cutting off his penis. I would say that that's worse. Yeah, I would too. <laughs> But they're like, oh, well, that doesn't happen at that age. Yeah, well, that's because there's pushback. Once they're able to get those puberty blockers they want every kid to have access to, they're immediately going to move on to the next thing. Because that's the whole thing about quote-unquote progressivism, is it keeps progressing. It doesn't just stop. So you can't also, say just because something isn't happening exactly like that now doesn't mean it's not going to. Like they get their, also, they achieve their goal and then they move on to the next thing. Yeah, because they just want to, they just want to attack social norms. They don't care what it is. They just want to push further and further. That's the whole goal. There's never I a stopping point. They, yeah, they, it's never getting to an ideal place. Morality. It's just pushing through the wall every time. Yeah, yeah, they they limit all morality. Yeah. I mean, what they mean is they limit all morality to things like racism and sexism and transphobia. Like, that's all they think of, the, that's all they care about yeah. is phobias. That's all they care about is There's is a lot of issues that, that more than that. that yeah. Well, and they've completely, they've completely destroyed what it means to be gay. Yeah. Take my Rio video, for instance. You know, that thing I say I don't like to bring up and then I bring it up all the time now. Um... I want to specify, though, uh, for me that uh, I personally think that it's that homosexuality is uh, like like you could say that it's by nature because animals do it. But I believe I personally believe that animals do it out of convenience, not out of nature. And because those animals will still have sex with the opposite sex as well. So. I, I, I do think it's naturally programmed into every every living thing to have sex with the opposite sex. I would say by nature. I don't know what the cause of homosexuality is. I don't... Um, I think it's just trauma. I think that could be a contributor. Well, trauma being raised by mostly a, a female... Or it, it could be a lot, it's a lot of things, but what I'm saying, it, but it, but it's still mostly factors in your personal life not being born that way. Again, I... I 
I can't speak to that 100%. Like I said, I think, um, I think there could be a lot of factors with that. Ultimately, I don't necessarily find it immoral. I just think when you're trying to, like, push it on people, that's when I have a problem, is when you try to completely, like, force your ideas onto someone. That's when I have a I don't problem. Think wrong. I don't think there's anything wrong with it, because, like I said, animals do it out of convenience, and I think there's nothing wrong with doing things out of convenience. I just don't like... I just kind of think it's a lie to be saying that by nature, I'm only attracted by this, to the same sex. I just don't see how that's possible. I would say, I think, um, I think with homosexuality, I think that, uh, no one knows exactly what the root origin of is, is it, is of it. And that's because people are scared to ask why, because they're like, why well, would you I, even I, ask I that? Statistics say pretty well though, that it's mostly people with trauma or people that were, had parents that had divorced and that they had, the mother had custody of them. I don't know. I think I think it also. I think I've I've known people that I've not known that to be the case. But then again, I haven't gotten inside their head. Well, we are raised in a culture though that encourages us to be a certain. That's race. true. It is very well. It is very pushed socially. So I do think that could be a factor. And I mean, a lot of people are very. A lot of people say a lot of things that are out of social pressure today. Yeah, uh, I don't. Think, I think a lot of what people say they believe in is motivated by social pressure, not actually their own thought and in, in what they actually think. I feel like it could be genetics. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe there's a genetic component. I don't know, because they're afraid to study it. I, w I, w I actually, it kind of makes me want to talk to my brother about it. Yeah, your gay brother. Yes. <laughs> yeah, he has a gay brother. <laughs> and, and, and like I said, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think you can do whatever yeah. you want. Like I personally don't want to be with, with, with women because I just don't. Uh, because I find most of them to be repugnant, unlikable. <laughs> and for me, I think that's just a case by case basis, which I, I kind of wanted but to like, say I about. I think there are exceptions too, though, because I yeah. obviously like Ayn Rand is like the biggest factor of my worldview, and that's a woman. So yeah, smart lady. You were going to say something? Uh, Our uh, ideology was made mostly by men, so... I just wanted to quickly go back to, like, because uh, I had the idea, like, custody battles, I feel like. That should be a case-by-case -case basis, because sometimes yes. the man's worse, sometimes the woman's worse. Yes. It, sh it shouldn't be just the man, just the woman. It should be yes. like, looked into. But courts very much favor men, favor women when it comes to custody. Yeah. Which, it's, it's not right, because there's a lot of... Terrible and, women out there. Yeah, like Casey and Anthony. Women that have actually been raped and have lost court court cases, I will acknowledge. But uh, but those court cases were lost because there wasn't sufficient evidence, and I, and that, I think that's fair. There has to be sufficient yeah. evidence for someone to be arrested. I'd rather a hundred guilty men walk free than a single innocent man be in chains. It happened like what the one uh, what's his name Kevin Strickland yeah who was in, in, wrongfully in prison for forty years yeah even though the person the sole witness withdrew her testimony and retracted it they still kept him in and then when they and, uh, with like without a shadow of the doubt when they proved that he did not do it he was still in jail for like several months before they finally released him yeah I know that was ridiculous and I'm person I'm personally glad that bill cosby was let out of prison obviously i don't know anything about whether or not he was a rapist or not yeah obviously, no but i don't know it was exactly illegal the for them you to imprison know. him it was illegal for them to imprison him too they broke yeah, they broke they, I mean. they like, violated you, you his fifth amendment did, rights yeah that's exactly why he shouldn't have been in prison because you don't know yeah and they violated his rights too because he had a he had a previous agreement where he testified for himself but was given immunity and then later on, they used that testimony against him, which is illegal because he was given immunity on that. And so they violated his Fifth Amendment rights not to testify for himself because the only reason he did in the first place is because he had immunity. So they just wanted to get him in jail. Yeah, they just wanted to nail him. I want to bring this up just because I consider it to be another unfair trial, which is the trial of Charles Manson, uh -huh. where everybody says that he was a mur murderer and that if you don't think so you're you're a crazy conspiracy theorist even though his trial was extremely unfair the president said he was guilty before his trial even began and all the all the testimonies were from drug addicted people that actually committed the murders that actually committed the murders and they say that he's to blame because he told them to commit the murders 
that that's not sufficient enough evidence to be put in prison for life until death. Yeah, and I think I think you know more about cuz people say well he wanted to push a race war with Helter Skelter. I think you know more about that than I do, Corbin, uh, so. He has always declined that theory. He has always said that was false. He never said anything about Helter Skelter being true. He's always claimed that it was a uh, that it was a conspiracy. So, what was his involvement with everything? Uh, his involvement was that he was uh, a part of they, that you can call it a cult, but really, like it's a cult as in like any kind of hippie, any sort of hippie band of people is a cult. Like uh, they all do, they all are kind of cults in that they have this weird ideology, and that it doesn't really make sense. But but what I mean is like they were they were this like group of hippies pretty much, and he wasn't even the leader of it. You know, he, there was uh, somebody else who was the leader of it, who was a who was a, a drug dealer, or something like that. So was it not actually uh, called the Manson Family, or was it called the Manson Family? Because didn't he release an album called Manson Family Album? I'm gonna be honest, I don't know. Okay, because I, I do know he but, did do that, and it's typically referred to as the Manson Family. So that would he, lead many to conclude that, that he was, was in, in charge that was of it. A part of it that was much more uh, prominent in their beliefs and the whole murder aspect. And there was this big part that's left out about like this uh, d- this drug dealer guy. I don't know. I can't go into details about it because uh, this specifically is where I get. I, I'm not sure, but all I can say is that Charles Manson has consistently said that he didn't do it. There was no evidence evidence that he did tell them to go kill anybody. And the only evidence you can go on is the word of drug-addicted murderers. So I think the case is completely unfair. Yeah, I mean... It seemed like Dunley got screwed over in the courts. Yeah, like, with that being the case, yeah, I would agree. And also he had several retrials that were also unfair, where the judge didn't really listen to anything he was saying and just dismissed him it kind of reminds me of have you seen cape fear the movie no but i've seen the simpsons episode that was a parody of it uh it's basically it's cape about fear where like there's like a person under the car or something yeah it was like a it's like a defense attorney who you know a defense attorney is supposed to defend whoever their client is doesn't matter what they did right um, but he did not want to defend him because he knew the guy was a monster. So he uh, basically um, didn't defend him to the best of his abilities, and then he ended up going to prison, the client, for many years until he finally got out and then basically went on a revenge quest, essentially, to go kill him and his family. Okay. I wonder if Law Abiding Citizen was at all inspired by that. Law Abiding Citizen? I haven't seen that. Yeah, what's that? It's a good movie. So, Law Abiding Citizen is this movie where uh, this guy's like daughter and wife get like brutally raped and murdered in front of him. And he sees it happen, right? And then yeah. one of the killers gets executed, but he wasn't the one who actually did the killing. The one who did the killing takes a plea deal where he throws the other guy under the bus, the other guy gets executed, and the one who actually killed them gets away. Like, he gets, like, a couple years and then he gets out. Where he, because he pleads down to, like, third-degree murder. Yeah. Um, and then, the, 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 the dad of the daughter and, like, the husband of the, like, the, the main character, he's really pissed off about that, naturally, that the one who just brutally murdered and raped his wife and kid in front of him uh, got away. And so, like, he gets really upset and, like, makes this big thing saying we shouldn't make deals with murderers. And his lawyer's like, this is the best shot. This is the only way we can guarantee it. And ultimately, it's my decision, not yours. And so then that happens. And then it cuts to years later, right? There's a time skip. Mm -hmm. And um, in the time skip, they're going to execute the one that got the death sentence, right? And he gets injected, but then he starts, like, freaking out and, like, feeling terrible pain. Because it's supposed to be a painless injection. Yeah. But someone swapped the vials with some shit that would fuck him up. Was it the... It was the dad. Yeah. And then he then he um, he um tracks down the other guy, butchers him, and does all this, like, cuts off his dick and does all this terrible stuff to him, like, brutally tortures him to death, and films it, and then sends it to the, the lawyer's daughter, who's, like, eight years old or some shit. It's really fucked up. 
Uh, but he mails it to his house, and then the guy's daughter finds it and watches it. Like, I don't think he was intending to send it to his daughter, but she's the one who got it. Um, I and, shot a snot rocket on my own jacket. That's disgusting. Um, <laughs> but, uh, anyway. So then, like, he gets arrested, right? But then, like, after he's arrested... I'm gonna shorten this, because I'm basically summarizing the whole movie at this point, so I should just... Sl- just I should just gloss over some of it. Yeah. Um, but essentially, he gets put in prison for killing the guy, right? And then he still is killing people involved with the case while he's in prison. The dad is. Yeah. Because that's why he wanted to go to prison, I guess, so he could start killing more people in prison. Right, but he's somehow killing people from within his cell. Like, he's actually still getting them killed. Like, at first, you're like, okay, because he buried one of them and, like, gave him just enough oxygen for them to find him if they do what he wants. Like, he he forces, like, the, uh, the people in the jail to cooperate with him. And, like, give him, like, a steak dinner or give him an iPod. Stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and so, like, he does that. And then, um, like, that, so they find the guy who's buried, but they didn't do what he wanted. And they didn't bring him his music in time. They were a few minutes off, so the guy died. Because he gave him exactly enough oxygen that if they would have followed his plans exactly, he would have survived. He would have survived. Uh, but then, after that... Other people start actually dying. Like, one of the uh, other attorneys, her car blows up when she tries to start it. Nah, he fucking rigged a bunch of shit all around town. Yeah, but, like, it wasn't rigged before. So you're like, how's he still doing this? And then there's a twist at the end that reveals how he's been killing people from within inside, inside his other cell. Other people are helping him? No, it's... It's actually simpler than that, but... Uh, what? Well, uh, he, um... He, like, he brought... He, like, he specifically tunneled into prison... As, way before he killed anybody. And specifically into the solitary confinement cell. And then he made a way in that he could sneak himself out, in and out once he was in. Shawshank Th- Redemption style. Yeah, but bit. like reverse. He tunneled into yeah. prison. And then he killed he killed the guy, got put in there. And then he killed his cellmate to get put in solitary so he could move freely. Because again, solitary is the one he tunneled into. Ah, uh... Interesting plan. I guess it yeah. worked out for him. Yeah, well, I mean, he, he dies in the end. Yeah. Because uh, the, the the prosecutor finds out uh, what his, his revenge. Pla- plan was. Yeah, he got his revenge, except he didn't kill the main prosecutor guy. Um, and the, but the prosecutor guy learns his lesson because he's like, I did learn a lesson from you, Clyde, but this isn't what your daughter would have wanted. And he's like, my daughter doesn't want anything. She's dead. And he's like, all right. But if you, pu- if you, um, if you push that button, it'll be the worst decision you make for the rest of your life. Or you'll, no, you'll have to live with it for the rest of your life. And he's like, I understand that, right? And then he pushes the button, and he's like, since you pushed it, the rest of your life is going to be like 30 seconds because I rigged the bomb back up to your own cell. So, then he, so he kills himself in the end, trying to blow up like some sort of congressional building or something. But the prosecutor... I always think it's... Uh, I, think it's I, th- I always think it's stupid in movies when somebody's like on this big revenge... <laughs> thing because somebody screwed them over royally uh-huh. they're trying to get payback or whatever and then they finally get to that person and they're like you know killing me isn't gonna get this family member that i killed back you know uh-huh. i always think that's stupid because it's like uh it, but you still killed them like they're dead they don't have an opinion anymore so what does that matter to me i'm going to kill you now because you yeah took that from me. i think like, when you're that like, consumed by revenge it's not gonna matter no, you're yeah. gonna want to finish your think, quest. Yeah, you're wrong. not gonna you're, you're not gonna stop close. and think for ten seconds about playing guitar with your father figure who was killed in front of you with the fingers that this bitch just took from you, and then decide not to kill him because you remembered a happy moment she took from you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you that one for now. I, think it, I, I don't like how anti revenge movies are well personally i think if somebody kills somebody that you love like straight up kills them for no reason you should have the right to kill that person i kind of think i i don't know if i agree with that i think revenge is a dangerous thing um I don't, it, it's it's fair it though, a cycle. isn't it somebody if you, if ends you the wanna... life of somebody you love somebody that's deeply personal to you don't you have a right to take from them i i don't know if i'd say that i think that's uh what, what no, no, that no, you'll be you'll, that yeah, you yeah, go unpunished you, you're taking from them, but then you'll also be taking from people who are uh, associated with that person who didn't do anything. Oh, like I don't them. care about people that are associated with them. I hope they feel just as painful as I felt. Well, then, then you're no better. I don't care. Eye for an eye. I, I don't agree with that. Hammurabi's code, huh? Well, why not? 
Because I don't think it solves anything. I don't think it fixes the problem. I think it just creates an endless cycle of revenge. I don't know, though. Because what does that mean? That means you can kill somebody and then and then you don't pay for it. Instead, you get better from it. And, you're, and yeah, you're better to society. But how does that... What does that say to the people that you harm? I mean, that's fair, too. Like, I, I ultimately do think there is a lot of problem in the court system. I think that a lot of criminals get let off far too easy, and others get sentenced far too harshly. Um, but uh, I don't think that that means that we should suddenly start taking revenge on people who wrong us. I think that's wrong. But, I mean, if you see somebody kill somebody you love right before your very eyes, you can kill that person right there, and there's nothing morally wrong. No, yeah, right there, absolutely. That would yeah, be self-defense, I, mean, I guess. Well, I mean, like, even, well, I mean if they've already killed them, too, I'd still probably kill them right there. Penalty if they killed your child. I don't believe in the death so penalty. killed your child, wouldn't you want them to have the death penalty, though? Emotionally, I would want them to be dead, yes. But philosophically, I don't agree with the death penalty. I mean, like, I don't think... Like, if somebody was really wronged by somebody and they killed somebody for that... Like, I can get it. I can understand that. Well, it's not that I can't get it and understand it. Emotionally. It's not that I don't get it. Like, I get it. But my thing is, is I don't think... I don't trust the state to carry out an execution. And also, I don't believe the state should kill Look, someone once they're in captivity. My current objection to it is if somebody's falsely accused of murder, somebody didn't actually do it, and they're accused of it, and and you and all murder is given the death penalty, you know? Uh, somebody who's falsely accused get the death penalty, and then it could be discovered afterwards that they were innocent. And obviously that would be wrong. Right. But I think if you objectively know for a fact that somebody kills somebody, I don't know. I, I just don't like the idea of someone being killed after they're in captivity. If you if you kill them in the act of committing murder, or even shortly after, I don't necessarily think there's a like moral I, problem I with it. But I don't think that rapists and pedophiles, I, don't, I personally don't think that they should get the death penalty because I think the punishment should fit the crime. You shouldn't be punished... Uh, with an extreme that you didn't do yourself. Right, and I, I think we're both of the opinion that murder is the worst thing you can do, which a lot of people aren't anymore. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying is, I think murder is the worst thing you could do, and that's why I've sort of started to think that somebody should be punished more for that, because that's the worst thing you can do. Like, that should be punished, shouldn't it? Sure, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd agree, but I also do think that there is nuance. I do believe in redemption fundamentally. I do think... Even murderers, I, I like to the think there's a path the, to redemption. The, think about how much you have to argue in your mind that it's okay to kill somebody. Like, you really have to argue that in your mind, that it's okay. Well, I, I don't think it's okay to kill somebody. No matter but that's what. what, what no I'm saying is that's what a murderer reason. does, though. They, they, they aren't just going... They aren't just in the whim of the moment. All of a sudden, they have this emotional burst that they need to kill somebody. They think about it. They contemplate it. They're like... I think they, it depends they, on they the murder. Yeah, second-degree murder is a burst of passion, essentially. Yeah. And then third degree murder is unintentional. Yeah, that's manslaughter. Well, no, manslaughter is different. Third degree murder is when you are unintentional, when you knowingly could have caused great harm to them. You weren't trying to kill them, but you had a blatant disregard for their well-being. That's third well, degree. Well, it was an accident. I Where, whereas so manslaughter is when it's me. accidental. I don't think yeah. you should get the death penalty for accidentally killing somebody. No, but like when you're in a fight and kill someone, that's like second degree murder. Well, even a fight, I don't think you should be, because you don't, you didn't, because that still doesn't imply that you knew they were going to die. That's just, you wanted to hurt them and you accidentally killed them. Okay, but like, let's say a guy, let's say, okay, like, let's say a guy catches someone fucking his, like, underage son, right? And he puts a bullet in his head. Should that guy get the death penalty for acting to defend his family? Uh, no, because he was... Because you see, that's self-defense, in my opinion. Well, it is. I agree. Because he's defending yeah, his family. And I don't think people should die for self-defense. Yeah, I'm just saying that there is more nuance to murder than just murder. But I don't think there's much nuance in like somebody, like somebody who's been obsessing over somebody and just hates somebody because of their beliefs or because of the way they live, and they and they and they hate that person so much that they have to kill them. Because if somebody killed me, I would want that person to be punished. I wouldn't want that person to... I mean, I would want that person killed. I wouldn't want that person to go to okay. prison. I'm going to bring up one area that I think that... I'm curious now, because we've had other discussions. What about Jeffrey Dahmer? Jeffrey Dahmer? Because... 
that is a good point. That actually is a really good point because he, he became Christian. Mm-hmm. So, and I know that you, you're you're very. I know you're very sympathetic to Dahmer, which is why I specifically brought him up. Because mm. he did become Christian, and I have to give, and I have to say that there, the people can get over it. People can become better. Yeah. And everything. Like I do think it but was if, right if that he was Jeffrey locked away. Dahmer literally murdered and ate me. I don't know how I'd feel then, you know. Yeah, exactly. So that's what I'm saying is you're 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 talking emotional versus philosophical. There's a difference there between what I would emotionally do and what I would philosophically and principally want. There's a big difference well, when something is closer it to in home. Terms of principle too, because because I, I think if, because if you're talking about principle, I'm thinking of fairness and then and that leads me back to i have an eye for an eye well the world isn't fair yeah but I, i'm saying but men can be fair i mean we can but we're often not and i don't think you can ever truly be fair because no one is truly equal in the but truest I think sense you have to hold yourself to a standard and the choices you yourself. don't make are just as big as the choices you do make right yeah i'd agree um but here's the thing i do all i do ultimately believe that there should, there's always a path to redemption. Um, and sometimes that redemption does involve being locked away from I society. I think anybody can redeem themselves, but I think if somebody personally wrongs you and you're still alive and you know that that person did the murder, like the most horrible act a human could do, something that takes argument in your own mind to do, um, I, I don't know. I mean, I understand, like, if someone killed my family, yeah, I'd want to fucking kill them. I get that. Yeah. I mean, like, I don't think a group of people can judge that person. It, it, I mean, well, at the same time, though, but it, should one man judge a person? You know what I mean? Same thing. Like it's, it's kind of tough. Yeah. Because I ultimately do. Because I'm all for due process. I don't believe in just killing people on the spot. I don't believe in vigilante justice for the most part. I think... I, I, I want to at least think about where the line is. Like, yeah. how far can somebody go for, for them to definitely have to have the death penalty? Right, and that's why I just fundamentally don't believe in it. Because I don't know where that line would be drawn for me. I don't know that there is that line. I think there are people that I think would society would be better off dead. For instance, Casey Anthony, I'd have been so happy if she was dead. But it wouldn't have been the right if thing. Somebody's a current threat. I think they should definitely be killed. I don't know. Well, killed or locked away, I would say. I think. Well, I mean, like, if somebody's like literally like could kill like a million people at any moment, that like, person like should a shot terrorist, on the spot. maybe like a known terrorist that might do a terroristic act. Yeah, like a terrorist should be killed on the spot. I think. Well, and here, here's an issue that uh, Rem here brought up to me the other day. I mean, there is also the issue of, uh, you know, keeping someone on tax dollars funded in the prison and stuff when we could just get rid of them when they're like a murderer. And I, I, and also, I understand I, the I, argument I there too. Meaning, uh, when it comes to, cause imagine like, cause to me a perfect society is a completely capitalist society. I mean, not, I mean like a free market. Yeah. Free market no capitalism. Yeah. No government at all. So anarcho capitalism basically. Yeah. Yeah. In this like super idealistic world, uh, I would see it as just somebody kills okay. somebody or steals from you. In that, that you world, can... in this society that we are we are coming up with as a theoretical, I agree. Take the law into your own hands because there is no other law. I agree in that case. But I'm saying with the systems we have currently established, not. I don't believe the state should have the authority to take someone out. So I guess in yeah. a sense, I I I would be more okay. With someone, in a sense, getting a revenge, although... principle to me, if somebody wrongs me, I feel like I should be allowed to wrong them just as much as they wronged me. I would say I get that from a, from a, from like a, like an emotional perspective, right? Someone, someone wrongs me. Or like a, um, a purely like by the numbers perspective even, right? I could see that. Um, I think there is more nuance than just that, because again, I don't like revenge because it does lead to a cycle. But I can understand the argument in favor of it, and I definitely think if it came down to it, I probably would take it if it came, like, something... I, I really get revenge, though. I really get it, because, I mean, I don't know, because I like to think in terms of, you do this to me, that gives me the freedom to do it to you. There's no hypocrisy here. You did this, you have to face the consequences of your actions. You chose to do this. 
Right, but then then we go back to the argument, can two wrongs make a right in this instance? Mm-hmm. And why are they doing the thing they're doing? Yeah. Like, I do think that that motive comes in, too. Like, granted, if a guy is trying to kill me because it's him or me, I'm still going to kill him in self-defense because, again, it's him or me. In that instance, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, feel like I don't know, though, because I don't think you could... Because, I mean... I don't know. It, it, wouldn't it be super hard to live with somebody killing somebody you love the most? Yes. Hence why I think that most people would agree they want him dead. Mm-hmm. But... But I, I guess there also is a truth of holding yourself to, to, a, to a high standard. But yeah. That high standard is really hard to meet. Yeah. I do, I do believe in being the better man. But I also, like, again, I think with the death penalty specifically... That's carried out by the government. So that's a different argument as should someone be able to dish out their own justice versus should the state be able to do it. Um, And I think both of them are actually complicated questions. I don't think the state should be able to do it, but I think the other one's a little bit more nuanced and complicated. So with like a redemption, Uh say they do this terrible thing. um, and I do think that our court should be focused more on redemption than punishment. Yeah, absolutely. It's hard for me not to think about... Right. personal people like people the people that actually are going through it the people who are victims to it I mean if, if we could somehow make it where rehabilitation is like really good we could actually like really help people become redeemed because I, th- cause I, I uh. always think it's crazy when we say that murderers aren't crazy because I think you have to be crazy to think that murder is okay yeah I don't think a sane person kills yeah. are they like crazy forever or do you think it was just like temporary insanity that's a good question, because I personally I don't, I don't believe think in absolute insanity. Either. Means that you're not. I mean, like I think, because well, I'll let you talk. Anyway. Well, I I don't necessarily think that they they have to be completely insane forever. I think that people do change, and that I think does include murderers. I think if you are a credible threat to society, though, it does make sense to keep you locked away. And I do think, in a sense, keeping you locked away can be part of your redemption. And I guess, in a way. If we were looking at this more on a theological level, right, like presuming there was an afterlife, which I know you're not a proponent of Corbin, but let's say pretend there is, right? Maybe part of their overall grand scheme redemption is dying for what they did in that grand scheme. And, and what, then being reborn or going to per- perhaps, the afterlife? Or... Perhaps. And even if there's not an afterlife, maybe that is how they redeem themselves. Personally, I don't believe in any kind of afterlife because I think something has to already have sufficient evidence in order for it to be believed. I mean, in order for it to be good to believe in it. And I think that's a fair argument. But, uh... I, would like, I think reincarnation and Personally, would be cool. to me, I just think the idea of an afterlife sounds scary. I don't want to live forever. See, and I, I'm the opposite. I don't like the idea of my consciousness going away. Maybe that's a narcissistic thing in me. I don't like the idea of not existing. No, no, no. Yeah, no, no, for I me, think I'm kind of a narcissist, but I'm not. But I still want to, at one point, I, 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 I feel comfort in knowing that at one point there won't be anything. I know. That I gives me the opposite I'm, of comfort, no, personally. Agree. Like, like, for me, it's like, even, I won't even be present for it, because obviously I won't exist anymore, but just thinking about not nothingness, existing. no. Yeah, I really don't it's like scary. that idea. It, I don't really know. To me, it seems me. comforting because most life is pain, I think. I don't know, because... And I think that that's part of it, is the relief of death. I don't know. Well, I think life is what you make of it, right? Like, I think yeah. that... Yeah. Well, I think, I think that life has a lot of good to it. I, I like the misery of life because I think it emphasizes the good in life. Right. But I think if there's you an appreciate afterlife, that none have. of it really matters. None of the misery I felt really matters if there's an afterlife. Because it's just going to be billions and billions of years of pleasure. I don't know. I, I, I just... I think that I like the idea of continuing to exist. I don't like the idea of just... I'm out. I, I, I hate that idea. It scares me because then I have no perception of anything. And not having that perception... I think that's that's interesting, though, because... I don't, it's not not existing that really, I'm afraid, I'm afraid of there being a higher power that is just objectively right, and that has control over me, and that after I die, they get to decide where I go. Right. Well, here's the thing, 
I, I would agree that that is, that is a scary aspect, and I don't like a lot of the perception of what most religions have of God and morals in that regard in some cases. Like, I do think the moral framework is important, but I do think there are a lot of things I disagree with, and I think, for instance, if you are a religion that specifically believes in hell, which, by the way, the Mormon religion does not. They have three kingdoms that you go to when you die. You go to the best one if you're good. Well, if, if you're like that, that, the idea of the afterlife that the Mormons have is definitely way cooler than any of the other. Yeah, because there's like the top kingdom, right, which has three levels, yeah. and in the top level, this is where you were a good Mormon. You got married in the temple. You had kids. You literally become a god who creates his own world. Yeah, if I actually felt that was possible, I would definitely, I would be like the most hardcore Mormon ever. <laughs> yeah, and then the second one. <laughs> I don't remember. I think you're like an angel. And then the third one, you just kind of live up there. Um, and then after that, there's two other kingdoms below that. There's the second one, the, the t t see, turtle, uh, t terrestrial kingdom. Um, and um, that one's supposed to be really good, too. It's just proportionally not as good. And same thing with the one after that. And the third one is still considered to be millions of times better than Earth. And there's, there's the, the Mormon equivalent to hell is called outer darkness, which is a fourth thing. And that, there's literally only one way to go there, and it's if you know for a fact, a certainty that God exists, like you've talked to him face to face, and then you actively preach against him. That's the only way to go there. It's a very optimistic way of believing I what think happens the, when you die. Yeah, the Mormon afterlife is very forgiving. You can do whatever the fuck you want. I, I, does that kind of give you license to do whatever the hell you want? And if you look at it, the kingdom. description of hell that people attribute with the Bible is not at all what the Bible describes as hell. I think a lot of people t borrow stuff from Dante's Inferno. Yeah, like Dante's Inferno shaped everybody's idea of hell, but yeah, the Bible says that it's just the absence of God, and it doesn't in the gnashing of teeth. But other than that, it doesn't go into great detail. Yeah, like the Divine Comedy is great, but I do think it is where people shape a lot of their ideas of hell and heaven and purgatory on. I think fear of hell can also be a good thing because it keeps people in mind a lot. Yeah, but I, I think if you believe in hell in the sense that it actually does exist, according to a lot of religious people, it's very brutal because it's infinite suffering for a finite crime, which I, I completely I, disagree what with. What I personally don't like about hell in the Bible is that it's not bad people who go to hell. It's people who don't believe in God that go to hell. Well, it depends on which Christian religion we're talking about, because either yeah. way, it's eternal suffering for choices made in a finite life. So how long would you, like, want them to suffer, I guess, under that? I would say if there needs to be suffering, it needs to be proportional to the suffering you caused. Yeah. And that's why eternal suffering, just suffering forever is completely unfair to me. Yeah, because there's n because you don't live forever in this earth life. Yeah, there's so, nothing you could do that's so horrible that you deserve to be suffering forever. Exactly. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I think that uh, redemption is important. I do think that there is a punishment aspect to the law as well. And I do think that is important in its own regard because it's a deterrent. Salutations. But, uh, yeah. Anything else you want to talk about, Corbin? Uh, I gotta go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do we want to end the video there, or do we want to keep going after? Uh, we can keep going. I'm just gonna, I, I want to go to the bathroom. You guys can continue doing it. Uh, and also the video? And doing the video. <laughs> and, <laughs> um, and, uh, I can go back. I know we're gonna watch some movies here in a minute, so we're probably gonna wrap this up soon, but, uh. Okay. I'll, I'll I'll probably pause the recording. We'll give some final thoughts when you get back. How's that? Okay. All right. Any other thoughts? Thoughts. Um. So, do you believe in objective morality? Yeah, I, I believe some things. Like, I, I don't know if I necessarily one hundred percent believe that there is objective morality, but I do think that there is to an extent. Like, I think that there are a so lot I of. Believe... Oh, well, you continue. I think that there are objective morality, the things that are objectively moral or immoral, like if you're intentionally going out of your way to cause pain to another person, that's probably immoral. The scale of the pain you're inflicting, I think, does determine how immoral. But, but it I, is immoral to cause pain. Yeah, it is immoral to cause pain, I would say. Like pain, suffering, you know, death, that sort of thing. Well, someone at some point said that it, that was immoral so it has to there has to be some real morality because you can't just start from nothing and come up with that and then everyone believes it no morality came from somewhere yeah 
I don't know if I if I agree with that, but my view on morality is that things. I don't think morality is is passed down from anyone. I think it's as simple as this objectively benefits me and this objectively benefits humanity. Therefore, it is good. And if something objectively doesn't benefit me and objectively doesn't benefit humanity, then I would say it's wrong. Right, but I would say there can be things that benefit you that are bad. Mm -hmm. Uh, But would they benefit humanity? No, but you said... Like, does something that benefits you always benefit humanity? I, 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 I mean, I guess in a way, because you are part of humanity, right? things that, because you could say that, because, I mean, like, killing somebody doesn't benefit, like, kill, killing somebody would never truly benefit me, because it would leave psychological damage on me. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, I, 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 I could see what you mean there. Um, I think, um... I think that that is a good way to put it, because, again, that is kind of a tenet of objectivism, right? As if it objectively benefits you, then it's good. Um, and I do agree... Or truth is good by uh, Ayn Rand series. I think it's like truth is good and false is what's bad. Yeah, as that's in, fair. Like, if you live your life by what... Uh, if, if, you, if you live by something you know is untrue, or you try to convince other people of something that is untrue, you are being immoral, you yeah, are being bad. Yeah, Absolutely. I 100% agree. Like, so you know it's not true, so it's immoral. Yeah, it's immoral if you are being dishonest with yourself and living something you don't believe. You know, like most people do nowadays. What's that, what's that called in, in psychology? Uh, cognitive dissonance? Yep. Yeah. What, what do you think, Rem? Do you think there's objective morality? Uh... You specifically mean objective morality, um... Yes, by objective morality, I mean objective morality. So by objective morality, do you mean morality objectively? Yes. <laughs> do you things that are think there are things that are objectively moral and immoral? Just by their very existence? Yeah, like murder. Uh, yeah, I think some things are just objectively immoral, probably. Okay, yeah. yeah. I think that's that's it. Anything else, Corbin? I think, personally, I think things that are, like, objectively wrong are things that are, uh, because the way I think of it is, like, if I force you to do something, I'm the one who's, who's in the, I think a force is sort of an evil. As in, like, you steal from me, you murder me, you rape me, that's what's immoral. So, Corbin, so libertarians and and anarcho-capitalists have a name for that. We call it the non-aggression principle. You don't aggress on someone, you're fine. But as soon as you aggress on someone, it becomes immoral. I agree with that. It makes it so you can defend yourself. Yeah, so you can defend yourself, but you can't go kill someone for no reason or take their stuff. I can have a question. uh, Yeah. uh, And that's why a a, a big reason why abortion is, is wrong is because is because that would be that's that's I mean that's even worse that's somebody who can't even defend themselves and you're taking their life yeah anyway what was your question do you think objective morality is a thing just always been there or do you think it's because of society I think it's always been innate to nature yes that's exactly what I was going on about I don't think society has any impact on morality I think everything that w- that uh, if society says something is immoral and it's not based on nature then that's just subjective it that's couldn't not... be from society because for it to be been from society it would have been one person's idea but it wasn't just one person's idea it was yeah. everyone everyone has come to the conclusion that murder is wrong Okay. it's not because of society it's just because you know it's wrong it's a, it's a nature well if you had a bunch of people just like co- collecting and they didn't, there was like no society they're just kind of doing their own thing. Yeah. Well, that's the ideal society to me. It's ideal. I, I, I believe that we should have just a world where people live their own lives and do their own thing. And cooperate with each other when necessary. I think, honestly, living on your own instincts and what you think is rationally true is is far better than than living by rules that are forced upon you by, a, uh, by an elite group of people. Yeah. No, like uh, I think it's it's it's, <laughs> and I think that we we grow up in a culture that completely dissuades us from our own nature. Yeah, absolutely. It encourages women to be men and men to be women. 
Like, both literal and figur figurative. Like, it makes us reject our roles that we have in nature, tells us those are wrong, those are immoral, and we're a freak for acknowledging they exist. Mm -hmm. And it, it's so weird to oppose with what people thought for thousands of years with what people just started believing in the past ten years. Yeah. And then they tell you, oh, you're, you're old, you don't get it. It's why I fucking hate that song at the beginning of yeah, Watchmen. Yeah, I was just thinking. Yeah, that song at the beginning of Watchmen, right, where um, the, the times they are a-changing, there's that line where he says, don't criticize, don't criticize what you don't what understand. You understand. It's like, fuck you. I can understand your dumb shit. It's just dumb. That's why college is a bad thing. School in general is a bad thing. Don't send your kids to schools. Yeah, schools are bad. Oh, I want to talk about uh, technology real quick. I never got to see Yeah, sure, we only briefly before. mentioned it at the beginning, so... uh. Um, but when I, I think when we were advancing in technology, when, when capitalism was really booming in America, it, after like the Great Depression, we were just inventing things nonstop because that was the most capitalistic America had ever been. And not just that, but that's the most capitalistic any society has ever been. Yeah. It was after the Great Depression in America. And uh, technology was completely booming where we were inventing phones and, and cars and we were inventing, well, I mean, cars were invented like in the 1800s, so never mind about that. But that was still capitalism. But inventing rocket ships, we were, we were building all this great technology. And uh, people could say we're still making great, more greater, we're making greater technology every day. But I personally don't believe that we are making drastic prog progress in technology. And I think that's because we are adopting more socialist ideas. And I think, uh, and we're also uh, in a culture that is obsessed with simplicity. Yeah, uh, every every new thing you see that comes out is just to make things more convenient because people are lazy. I feel like it's more innovating than inventing. Yeah, no, I would agree. And the well, innovations I mean, aren't like always a positive. No. Nothing really, like, uh, it, modern technology, I, I also think is like, since we got to the moon... In space technology, I don't think we really have made great advancements. We've had things, we've sent things to Mars, but we've never sent another human to Mars. We haven't been able to figure that out. Mm -hmm. And we haven't, uh, and, and cell phones haven't really progressed much, in my opinion, in the past, like, t in 20 years. Sure. Cell phones have well, been kind of the same, I think. Well, smartphones are very different we're from flip to phones. To on Mars. We're, we're pretty close to having rockets that can re-enter the atmosphere without destroying themselves. So we have... Yeah, like, there have been advancements. There's been advancements. Yeah, but I'm saying that those are small advancements considering how quickly we were progressing in the 80s and the 90s. Yes, but we're not what? racing with anyone. I, th I think you're going to have stagnation eventually once you get to a certain But, point. I mean, I do think there is a point I to be said. it's because we're not racing with people. I think it's because we are adopting more social... Actually, Corbin, Corbin... can't advance technology that much. Corbin, I would argue that those go hand in hand. Because we don't have the competition. And what is capitalism all about? Competition. competition. We need, we need the competition, competition breeds innovation. I, I yeah, I agree with that. Because you're wanting to be better than the other person, the other group. You're wanting to be now better. Now we in a culture where we're completely against being better. We're all equal. And everything's run by fucking monopolies. Won. Yeah, because the state supports Everything's them. Everything's ran by two companies. Yeah. Pretty much. I, I it's so crazy that people can completely disregard. Uh, if some, if anybody says that white people uh, have any sort of problem, it's completely dismissed. It, yeah, <laughs> you, your 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 pro, your uh, your struggles are not acknowledged. We yeah. live in different and realities, and it's, okay? And, <laughs> and it's super. It's weird too that the people say that he, that your problems is that you're trying to get attention, or that you feel, or that you are trying to. Uh, take away from struggles of other people or whatever when you're just trying to acknowledge your struggles you just want help with your struggles shouldn't everybody have their struggles helped with shouldn't everybody have help yeah <laughs> okay but yeah no i, I well that the thing funny. is Someone i'll take it so i think that like what do you say shouldn't everybody have help yes but i also don't think anybody should be obligated to help well yeah yeah but what I mean is like, because like I don't believe I should. About, if we're going to be saying this group of people needs help and this group of people needs help, then we should be giving help. If if you're specifically talking about disadvantaged people and you and somebody is claiming to be disadvantaged, I, I don't know. Well, I, I mean, think like, uh, so. It's like uh, 
Everyone should have mints, but they shouldn't be forced upon to have mints. What, you mean like how Danny just threw that mint at your head? Yeah. <laughs> Even though I you just want to shoehorn that in anyway? <laughs> <laughs> Natural selection. Oh. What, 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 what Thanks I mean, for the mint! Uh, where people do... Uh, people should. I don't think people should be obligated to help you. No. But I think if people are talking about all the people that need to be helped... They should acknowledge the people that need to be helped. They should be consistent with it. Yeah. Yes. If you're saying that these people have problems and these other people clearly have the same problems, you should want to help both of them. Well, and I think if you're too compassionate, too altruistic, too willing to help someone, one of the things you're going to run into is being easily taken advantage of, being manipulated, and being scammed. You'll always be brainwashed. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think that just comes down to a very us and them mentality that people seem to have. Well, I, 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 well, I, mean, th- I, would, I I'm kind of a, a us and them mentality person. I, I am to an extent too. Like I don't believe in a greater common good. I think that I, if I, cause I'm personally of the belief, if you're going against my morals, and you're against what I stand for to such a large extent. You're not my friend. You're my enemy. I can get along with people who disagree with me, and I have friends that disagree with me, and I disagree with all my friends on various things. I think it's important to be friends with people that you disagree with, honestly. I think it I is, think too. I think should be tolerant of those of different opinions, but there's a difference between having different opinions and people actually wanting to go against you, like people actually yeah. wanting to take from you. Because if somebody's like actually arguing to want to take something from me, then I'm not going to want to be friends with that person. Yeah. Let's say they're just like a different person culturally, and then you just, mm. you, you don't want to associate with them anymore or you want to subjugate them or you want to kill them I think that's where, where that mentality yeah I don't want to dangerous. kill anybody yeah. because of what they believe I'd only want to kill somebody if they wanted to kill me uh, yeah no that's fair um, and I do think here's the thing I also do think there are savage and civilized cultures that's one thing people don't like to acknowledge there are things that are wrong in some cultures and there are things that are right in some cultures. That's just how I it is. Bl- I honestly think we should keep using the word savage, and we should keep using the word primitive, in my opinion. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're good descriptors. Because I think there are primitive, and I think there are savage cultures. Yeah, and that's not to say that those cultures are wholesale bad, but they have abhorrent practices sometimes. So, it's like with Native Americans. Yeah. Of America. Uh, when we were coming to get this land... They were already in war with each other, and they had human sacrifice, just, ritual cannibalism. Yeah. But obviously, there were, you know, there were innocent Native Americans too that were yeah. just a part of, that were just uh, forced into this culture that they didn't even want to be a part of. Yeah, but do you know uh, a lot of them did come willingly? Like, a lot of them did yeah. side with the, the the colonists and come willingly. It's it's more complicated because it was it was it was a war. That's what it was. It was a war. It was one sided because one side had way better technology. But it was a war nonetheless. It wasn't like one-sided morally speaking. It was just one-sided force speaking. But to not be allowed, but, to, but, to, but to, for people to say that it is wrong of you to call a group of people that literally scalped and raped people uh, and, and committed genocide and all of this. Yeah, wiped out it, entire not, other tribes. To not be able to call them savages, it, to say it's immoral to call them savages is crazy. Clearly, it's obviously somebody is a savage if they're literally going around scalping and raping people. Yeah, and that's not to say that people today who descended from that are savages, because they're civilized now. Mm-hmm. And and it's it, 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 I always think it's I want to say something about uh, America altogether. Okay. Is uh, when when people talk about slavery in America, it, it, the um, so there were cult, so before America, obviously there were black people that had white slaves. There were Mexican people that had Mexican slaves. There were uh, white people that had white slaves. The first person to sell sell slaves to the white people were black people selling other black people. Was, yeah, but, people but what I mean is America is the first culture to to really say that that's wrong. Though we're the first culture to really acknowledge that that was a horrible thing to do. And yeah. I think that America deserves yeah. praise for that. Yeah. It also and it's like, look. Father said it was a blight brought on to us from the British. Yeah. I would say that people who were, who had slaves, slavery was a savage part of the culture. 
Like it's it's yeah. not just applicable one way. Like there there were savage parts in our cultural history as well. But I will say though that uh, like the Middle Ages, the Crusades, that was barbaric. So, it's it's it, yeah. I would say that America is great though for 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 the entire world agreeing that something is okay. But us saying no, this is wrong. We're not going to do yeah. this anymore. We looked down and whispered no. <laughs> I I just think that that's great because when people talk about slavery in America, I think that should be a defense of America because we were the first country to acknowledge it was wrong and stop doing it, and other and all the other countries kept doing it after. Yeah, like I I think that the fact that our society was literally founded on freedom mm-hmm. says a lot. Because, like, I mean, that's something I think it was Frederick Douglass said. And people can that say, we should, oh, uh, our ideals were hypocritical at first. But that was the point, is that we, since we had those ideals, they led to us realizing those things were wrong. And that formed the morality everyone has now. Right. And as I was saying, it's like Frederick, I think it was Frederick Douglass who said that we need to live up to those words, all men are created equal. Mm-hmm. And I think that that was a big turning point when people started to realize we say yeah, all men are say equal. It was hypocritical, but part of being human is learning over time. Yeah. Well, and the point is, everyone is hypocritical at some point, and if you don't learn from that, that's when you're going to have a problem. That's when you become, like, just a monster. Yeah. A fucking monster of a human being. Yeah. You gotta learn from your mistakes. Yeah. You gotta learn from history. Exactly. Or and else also, it's... I want to say about... Uh, another thing I want to talk about is... Uh, uh, the black community and how they say that systemic racism is obviously not all they're black conservatives who are against this obviously yeah um, but uh, that believe that systemic racism is the re- is the reason why they're so disadvantaged but uh, it's not it, it, that's uh, that's such a, a, a simple and, and silly way of looking at it Whoop. when there are fathers walking out on black families and also you're in a culture where you're constantly told, that you can't do something. So you're going to believe that you can't do that thing. Yeah. And there's also, also there's uh, problems in the black community where if one of them wants to speak intelligently or learn, or they, they act a certain way. They're told they're acting they're, white. They're, they're told they're act. Yeah. They're told they're mm-hmm. acting white and they're hated for it. And, and they're, uh, and they're ostracized. Yeah, no, it's just... Yeah. Well, the, th- the thing I've noticed about leftists is they like to think that everything is a simple thing with a simple solution. Mm-hmm. When the world is much more complicated than that. They also... Also, it's 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 insane to, to, to promote an ideology that has proven... It, it, that has been proven not to work many, many, many times. Socialism, I mean. Yeah. It, 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 it's never worked. Capitalism has worked many times. It's the one ideology we've found that's actually worked, and it's the reason we had rocket ships. It's the reason we had cell phones. It's the reason we had the nukes. It, 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 capital. It, it's the reason we had m- move. It, we invented the movie theaters and everything. It, and to say that that doesn't work, and we should go back to something that had people in bread lines. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It, it, it's stupid. Yeah, like. And again, they, they think everything's a simple solution. They're like, oh, we have more empty houses than homeless people. Just put them in the house. It's like, okay, but who pays to maintain the houses? I think what? How does the property owner get pl- paid? Well, I, I don't know. If, I don't think it's true either, Kyler. I'm just saying I think that it's an oversimplification, even granting for sake of argument that it is true. Because homeless people are typically homeless because of drug use, mental illness, personal choice. There's lots of reasons that go into it, and just throwing them in a house isn't going to make them any better off because they're not going to be able and to pay I, their electric at, at bill. At the end of the day, if you're arguing that somebody should be forced to give up something, that you should force other people to give up something, how could you possibly argue you're in the right? You're arguing for theft. Yeah. How could you be in the right? Exactly. Well, and, like, that's the thing. Like, when it comes to, like, health care, right? People say, health care is a human right. It's like, your rights do not demand the services of another person. That's not how that works. And then you can say... Uh, and another thing that's that's silly about it is you want rich people to give your give you money that you gave them in the first place. Yeah, by buying their products and services. Yeah, like there was already a trade there. They already gave you something. They don't need to give you money. They already gave you the product that you bought. Yeah. But like like there's this there's this thing where people, you know, they they think, you know, everything's a simple solution. 
and it's just not. They're like, oh, yeah, I also think it's. Oh, sorry, I'll leave. They're like, oh, why don't we give people more money? It's like because money is not. Like, money is based on the confidence of it. And if you just print more of it, there's less confidence in it. It becomes worth less. Mm -hmm. And there's no point anymore. Like, just printing, oh, you know, just print money. Money printer go burr, you know? Le Le it doesn't work. Leftist solution is the five-year-old solution. Yeah, exactly. Like, there, there are leftists that if you ask them, like, they're, they're like, uh, oh, it's it's good. We shut down all these farms and stuff. It's like, okay, where are you going to get your, your, your milk and your cheese and your meat? You, you know, from store. from the store. It's like, how does it get to the store? Oh, well, you go to the store. It's like, but it doesn't just magically appear in the store. There's a farmer. There's the trucker. There's I the may, supply line. I mean, it may feel that way because stores generally are stocked with food, but it has to come from somewhere. Yeah, like, we, we, are, so, we are so pampered and spoiled in today's society. Yeah, and, and, and that comes also to where... Uh, Joe Biden cutting off where we get our where we get our resources from. Yeah, like how he closed and several pipelines. That it's not fault of the president that we're all broke. Yeah, he shut down several pipelines that they were going to open here and near here, so we could become more energy independent. He stopped drilling on federal lands. And then he paid for pro he paid propaganda to be promoted on TikTok. We yeah, were, we were exporting. We had a net positive. That's the right term, right? Yeah, net positive amount of power and resources and oil last 2019 we did yeah 2019 was a booming year it's the best our economy also, has been in decades it's crazy that now all the leftist late night talk shows are now all of a sudden saying that trump was the better president yeah because it's so egregious that they can't they can't even deny it anymore i think it's so i think it's funny though that they're, that they're proven so wrong that now they have to come out now they have no choice they have to come out and they're only going to be proven more wrong in the future so they're just going to be coming out with more and more stuff in the future i think I, they just want to be on the winning side of like. yeah well leftists don't believe in objective truth mm -hmm. there's no truth but power yeah there's no truth but power and they believe that the world is only perception mm -hmm. everything's subjective yeah it's bullshit that's that's the problem with uh, nihilism is when you uh, like I think the show Rick and Morty is actually a good example. Uh, I'm, I'm not trying to be one of those editors like, well, Rick and Morty, cool. Uh, but what I mean is, uh, uh, with, with, with nihilism and Rick and Morty, the show gets worse over time. But I think it's because of the nihilist philosophy that it sort of promotes. Because mm -hmm. with nihil nihilism is a degressive philosophy. If you believe that nothing matters, you're not going to progress. It's not possible. You believe that nothing matters. It's not. I just don't think that's going to work out for well, you. Well, the show got worse and, because women wrote two seasons of it. And then it went back to the men and it got better. I don't agree. I thought the last season was god awful. I thought season four was good and season five was bad and season three was bad. She said season I thought all of every scene after every season after season three I thought was terrible. Season and I think it's part of the sort of nihilistic two philosophy two women where they have all the characters completely One and two were good, three was okay. Was three was written four by was women and it was terrible. I like four. the set of dollars. Because so. I mean think about the inconsistency of the character Rick in the show. Where in the first couple seasons he's a nihilist, but he still cares about his family. He still cares about Morty. It is proven in like every episode, and it, like at some point that he actually cares about his family or cares about Morty or whatever. And then in the later seasons, they just completely ditch that no, they and don't. make him this complete nihilist where he they doesn't care about anything. They did not ditch that in season four. That came back in season four, and that came back a little bit in season five. I think he wants to be a season nihilist, five, but he's not. The he still first cares episode's for trash. But there's some good episodes within that season. Which one? Season five. The first. But what I mean about about, about nihilism. I haven't though, seen five yet. Is where you're living only to have fun. You're. It was not nihilists live only to have fun, and they don't actually think about things rationally because they think everything is subjective. They think everything's up to opinion, when it's not. Yeah. And I think that objectivism is the perfect answer to nihilism because it's. It's making your rational conclusion to what is good. Yeah. Well, and logic, logic gets overlooked a lot. Like, granted, the hu human mind is flawed. All of us, all of us are. Mm -hmm. But to not think rationally and to just go for some innocuous concept of a quote-unquote greater good is not a good thing because you're not fighting for a real cause. You're fighting for 
the mystical I hate the greater, greater good. good. Yeah. The idea of a real cause. Because I think I would rather die for my moral principles than live a lie. Yeah. Personally. Well, and people need to stand up for what they believe in too. That's a big problem we run into. I would rather I'm, I'd rather die a good person than live my entire life being evil. Uh, by my, but by, 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 by my own standards of what is good. <laughs> no, yeah, I agree. Sorry, I couldn't help it. Yeah, um, you know, there's an old cat saying, "It's better to live." Um, an hour as a worm, or sorry, an hour as a tiger than an entire lifetime as a worm. That's a red dwarf quote. Yeah, uh, I think being a worm would be like one of the worst life options. That's that's basically a way that, to say to not be a coward, though. Which is true. People need to stand up for what they think. You'd be, you'd be good for a garden if you're a worm. Are worms good for a garden, or are they bad for a garden? I'm pretty sure they're good because they no, like burrow through holes not. and shit. And that's, that, something that, that's, that's something about modern morality, though, is that it's more about uh, the, the majority of people living long. Uh, I mean, like, uh, modern morality isn't being good and holding yourself to a standard. It's everybody getting to have, everybody gets to be happy for, for a long period of time or whatever. I don't yeah. know. Like, not like... But I think what is good is to hold yourself to a standard and you feel satisfied from that. You feel satisfied from accomplishing a goal you set for, me, set for yourself. Yeah. No, I think I think everyone should have goals and strive towards them. That's ultimately what our goal should be. And yeah, that's, that's again, another big principle of objectivism is actually going for something for yourself, not because it's what's expected of you. Because I, I've only been happy... Because since I turned 18, I sort of changed the, my outlook on life a lot. Uh-huh. And uh, when, I turned, when I turned 18, I stopped thinking in terms... Of, I stopped thinking about... I stopped thinking in terms of... Uh, there's somebody out there who's just uh, more right than anybody, and that's the person I need to think about. I started putting my, my own opinions and my own thoughts and my own reasoning. I started thinking about... Uh, my own rationality, and I start using what, what makes sense to me. Yeah. And stop thinking about what other people want for me, and I started thinking about what I want for myself and what I truly think is good based on what I can see reasonably for myself. Yeah. As you should. And that's just helped my world a lot. And, and viewing everything in black and white has helped me tremendously because viewing things in black and white gives me answers instead of viewing things as subjective and vague that doesn't lead to answers you don't get anything out of that right i mean i think there's more nuance than that um and like again you're much more into the whole black and white thing than i am for sure because i'm much more i still believe in gray areas and i think they're a very real thing well i think i think when it comes to gray areas those are just areas that are made up of black and white and you could separate that black and white until it is just black and white right yeah I know we've had that discussion before. Um, and I do think that that is a, a good way to approach it because that's a solution-based mindset to remove well, the bad from the good. I think it's the only reasonable way to look at it when thinking about... Because when you think about it like a detective solving a mystery as in trying to find clues to prove something or a doctor trying to cure a symptom or as... You, you know what I mean? Like you, you have to think of it in a scientific perspective yes but in the scientific perspective you should be trying to cure a symptom Kylie that's being semantic no it's not a symptom isn't the cause I know a symptom's not a cause but I don't think that's I don't think he literally meant a symptom <laughs> that's not what he said he I... said he says everything in black and white Angelo yeah <laughs> He's got you there, Corbin. You misspoke. You done goofed. I, I don't even understand. You said a doctor curing a symptom, but you don't want the doctor to cure the sy symptom. You want him to cure the cause. That's what oh, well, you have to now. find out the symptom symptoms to... You know what I mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. He doesn't. He's being a semantic piece of shit right now, but... <laughs> well, only because he said he talks in black and white. <laughs> it's his own fault. I'm not a genius. That is evidently clear, but... 
Um, anyway, is there any other topics we want to get on, or are we, uh, we good? We Gucci? Uh, I think I said enough. Okay. I'm good. Okay. Well, I think that does it. Um, this has been an interesting discussion. I hope you've enjoyed. And, uh, shout out to Simple Flips.